I got a request from Stefan in Slovakia to explain how a multi-timbral synth works, in this case a K4R. So I'm starting with the DAW configuration, just to show a couple of key points. Um, here's a track that I've got in solo. This is, uh, this is Cakewalk, by the way. So here's the MIDI output. So I know that my K4R is on port 3. And then for this track, you need to make sure that you've got a channel selected. Well, or, or none. None will just send on uh, channel 1. Um, so I usually just send on channel 1 and record everything individually. But if you are using a multi-timbral synth, you could set up multiple tracks, multiple MIDI tracks, to all send their data um, to different channels. That is a key point. And in your K4, which I'll show next, you've got to have it set up properly to receive those multiple channels. So here I'm in the multi uh, patch. Uh, I want to see how it's set up, so we press the edit button. We can see the volume. Okay, now I'm in, I'm in edit mode. So now let's go and look at what instruments are set up in here. Okay, you can see right away I've uh, got six voices set up. You can page through them, see which patches are set. Now, since you see the number uh, here, that number is actually the MIDI receiving channel. That's got to match what is in your DAW. Um, just so you know, the buttons here, source, mute, you can turn off individual patches. So let's go back to uh, these first couple patches and verify how they're set up. So this is the uh, receiving channel. You can see it's channel 1. You can set it to whatever you want, 1 through 16. right? And then we're going to look at the second one. And like I said, the, the number corresponds to the channel. So you can see 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see instantly uh, if the channel is on, as in unmuted, then you can see what voice and what channel. So this means having two of these set to channel 1 means I've got a layer set up. So I reach over to my keyboard and I'm hearing some layered sounds. I actually have more than one synth running at the moment. Let me power one of these down. Okay. Now within this patch, there is more to take a look at. Um, so you can select the instrument. I already talked about that. The zone. You need to make sure your zone is good. So for the B3, it's going from C negative 2 all the way to G8 in response to every type of key press, hard or soft. Um, for the saucer, you know, C2, we could change that with the slider. So you can see if we're going down from negative 2 up to positive 8, that the K4R can actually respond over a 10 octave range, which is uh, kind of crazy. Uh, no, nothing, no keyboard has a 10 octave range to provide input, but you can still program it to respond that way. Now, another really interesting point about um, the, uh, the multi patches on the K4R uh, K4R has eight outputs. It has a stereo pair and then six individual mono outputs. And we can see, there we go, the output patch. So 20, there's, uh, there's actually 32 that you can choose from. And these are all pre-programmed. Um, well, it can be programmed by you. And here's what they have in them. So if I press output again, I'm going to see... Uh, a submix. Okay. Now, submixes, I've got A through D. So I have eight submixes. So I'm going to take a look at, well, what is a submix? We press output again. And now we can see pan individual settings. So now, um, this is where you would set a specific 
submix, in this case, submix D to something other than just balanced stereo output. You can pan it hard, left or right, or anything in between, you know, plus or minus seven. And then you can get into I1 through I6. Those are the individual mono outputs. So uh, I don't have anything plugged in though, so I can't exactly show what it's doing, but I'll explain it. So you set your patch for the mult, you set your submix, and now when I go to uh, the individual uh, instruments, okay, I think we go into level, press the level button. You see, we also, I should point this out, we have individual level control, so you can do some pre mixing of all the different uh, voices in your multi patch, which is handy. Now, if we press level again, transpose, tune, standard stuff, submix. Okay, so we had been looking at submix D. So here you can specify different uh, submixes for each and every voice. Okay, so I could have, you know, the Moog on submix H, and that could be anything. It could be, you know, the stereo output. It could be panned, hard left. It could be one of the monos. And then we uh, set this third voice here on uh, submix D, which is the one we were just looking at. And again, you can set that any way you want. That is the secret to using all the individual outs on the K4R, as well as uh, any number of synthesizers that have multiple output capabilities and that are uh, multi-timbral so that different, you know, either different ranges of the keyboard or just the keyboard in general is a big, massive layer. Uh, you can still process those individual outputs send them to different outputs, process them separately with off-board gear, different effects in your mixer, you know, whatever you want. It gives you a, a lot of flexibility. You just need a lot of cables and a lot of channels. So hopefully that helps some folks um, using the K4R, which is a really fun digital synthesizer. Have a great day.